I'm a, since you've seen the video, you can have the track that goes with it. Oh, sweet, dude, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a Democrat in a majority Republican church, so it's yeah. like I'm already used to people. Oh, you know? okay, okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, it's, yeah, it's good stuff. So, what they talk about so far today? The importance of, the theme that I noticed was the importance of being a witness of Jesus Christ, that that is really vital, that Christ is alive, and because he's alive, we have to be the living emissaries of him too, you know, because he's so good and he loves us so much. And the gospel just changes lives. Yeah. And so it's that opportunity to go out in the world and say, hey, Jesus, he died on a cross for your sins, you know, and he's resurrected. And because of that, you can be forgiven of your sins. And it's so good, right? Mm. To be forgiven by grace and all these things. So What's good. your name, by the way? Braxton. Braxton, I'm Wade. Wade. This is, this is Ryan. Okay, nice to meet you. So my only question to that yeah. is, 2 Corinthians yeah. chapter 11 okay. says... Can I pull it up? Yeah, you can pull it up. I use... Oh, sorry. These things don't like to stay in. They really don't. Yeah. I like to use the NRSB. <clears throat> that's okay. Yeah, pull it up. Pull it up. Sweet. Yeah, we're not uh, with the group that are really particular about... Okay. Like KGB or things like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I know there's a group down in, uh, I think, Mesa where Apology is that use is like really KGB only. I've, some yeah, oh, uh, Stephen or something. Yeah, he's Stephen kind of Anderson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He kind he's of KJV me. only. Is, Some of yeah. our pastors tend to attract that particular. Yeah. Group, so, and so you said First t- Corinthians. Second, Second Corinthians, Corinthians chapter eleven. Eleven. Okay. Okay. Go. Up. Yeah. Go up a little more. Okay. All right. Uh, actually, the other way. I'm sorry. Go to okay. verse four. Verse four. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus yeah. than the one we proclaimed or you receive a different spirit from the one you've received, yeah. or a different gospel from the one you've accepted, you submit to it readily enough. He's actually yeah. speaking like to Galatians them. Galatians 1, right? Yeah, yeah, and he's kind of speaking to them in a, in a negative way, yeah. where it's like, you, come on, Corinthians. There's, uh, there's going to be those who bring a different gospel, yeah. a different Jesus, and a different spirit. Sure. And you put up with it readily enough. He's challenging them. Yeah. And so G- Jesus even says... There's going to be people who say they're Christ. Here I am. Oh, yeah. And he says, don't believe them, right? Right. And there's people at the end of time, mm-hmm. at the consummation of all things, sure. who will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all these things in your name? So the question is, Braxton, yeah. how do we know mm-hmm. that the LDS church, the yeah. evangelical church, or right. Muslims or Jews or, or whoever talks about Jesus right. in any way, can, can anyone just say whatever they want about Jesus sure. and that makes it him, it Jesus? Like, right, that's a great question. So how do you know, yeah. since we're even warned in scripture that mm-hmm. there can be different Jesus, right. how do you know you have the correct one? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's epistemologically weighty, right? <laughs> oh man, um, and that's, that's something to reflect on. Yeah, let me think about that, but. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's just because, right. uh, you know, Muslims will say he was a, a, a prophet. They say he's a prophet. They, um, right. they call him the Messiah, but the Quran doesn't give any explanation right. of what that means. Right. Even atheists will often have good things to say about Jesus that make him... Uh, uh, <laughs> fun. Jehovah's Witness will say that yeah. he was Michael the Archangel. Right. Yeah. Things totally. like that. Yeah. So Very few people will say things that they know to be derogatory about Jesus. Right. And usually they're just edge lords on Reddit anyway. Right. So. But the question is, who is he? Yeah. Right. It reminds me like and C.S. Lewis. He was like liar, lieutenant, lunatic, or lord, right? Exactly. And oh, what really kind of person? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's. I, I guess I'd say that, like this is obviously not the well thought out answer. This is the instinct. Sure, you you have no <laughs> research to do in front of you. Yeah. So I, yeah, give I'd us. I say l- one stick of it is is scripture, right? What is. Um, I, I guess you first have to establish a case for why you should trust Scripture, right? You can't just assume that Scripture is the Word of God. But how do you know? And then once you figure that out, I guess if you know that, that God has breathed, you know, His Word into Scripture, you can trust that, you know, that the people that He's put in, into places to speak through Him, obviously, you know, you had throughout history, Elijah, you know, all these figures, Moses, these prophets to speak for Him. Um, and then... I think reason's part of it. I think, you know, we can think about, here's evidences for things, you know, evidence that the resurrection actually happened. And I think if Christ was resurrected, then he has to be who he says he was. Right, exactly. And, oh, for sure. I yeah. think that seals the deal, yeah. for lack of a better term. So. And, and then, I, yeah, I guess, I guess personal relationship and communication is another part, maybe. I don't know. I appreciate you know, that. We all think. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I, 
The reason I bring it up yeah. is because I think it's so important. Jesus asks even the apostles, who, who, who do the people say that I am? And they, yeah. they, they say, some say you're Elijah, some say you're the prophet, some say you're this, some say you're that, some even say you're Jeremiah. Sure. It's like, and then he says, but who do you say that I am? Okay. And Peter says with this prophetic utterance that Jesus even confirms, you could have only gotten that from the Father. He says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that, that has more weight to it than just being Son of God. I, what that has in it, there's connotations in that, that he is, as Jesus says he is, I am. Okay. So Google at some point, Braxton, the I am statements of Jesus, yeah. particularly in the Gospel of John, the I am statements. I am. The I am comes from, do you know what that comes from? From like the Exodus 3, yeah, sure. burning bush. Yeah, I will be what I will be, right? Yes, I am yeah. who I am. Yeah. I will be who I will be. Yeah, exactly. From yeah. the burning bush, yeah. God himself, Yahweh, Jehovah, right. identifies himself and Jesus mm -hmm. equates himself to that. So we're getting yeah. into a little bit of a triune thing, but sure, I'll, sure. I'll let you guys speak real quick. Well, the, it, it's about good it. that you brought that up yeah. because... What he's saying in that passage, as yeah. I'm sure you're aware, is he's talking about a continual state of being. And yeah. that's what differentiates him from all fa false gods, uh, right. at least the ancient world. Right. He's saying, I have always been this. Right. And I will always be this. Yeah. God has always been God from all of eternity. Yeah. And so when we hear people come in and say, well, God is an exalted man, sure, that sure. he used to be a human just Lucifer's like us, spirit brother. Right. Yeah, I get that. This whole plan and then became God yeah. and you can become gods too because you're essentially the same species yeah. what we recognize here is that what they're talking about is a totally different God sure. from, from sure. what's in, in here yeah. And right. That's, right. Th that's kind of the issue for why we're out here. You know, it's okay. not just for yeah. our health. Although, right. I have been working on my glutes a lot today. <laughs> Are you getting all that walking in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not a cardio guy. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's that's the fundamental issue. It's the nature of God, who yeah. He is, who we are, and what's the real relationship yeah. between us. And that's the gospel issue. Right. So, you know, what we're hearing from the the Mormon Church through yeah. their scripture, through their leadership, is okay. God is. You know, he's an exalted man. He may very well have sinned as he progressed, although I know there's some discussion on that yeah, point. Yeah, definitely debate, um, yeah, for sure. That there are multiple gods going around, yeah. that uh, if you follow that same plan, then eventually you will become a god of your own planet, mm -hmm. where if you follow the same pattern that Elohim did with this planet, sure. the people on your planet will never even know that he existed. Right. Like, there's a lot in that that's hugely, hugely problematic. And so, you know, when, when we're talking, people are saying, well, God loves you. We're not talking about that God because it's just a totally different kind of being. And the love that he shows in reality is not just different, but far greater sure. than the love that they're talking about in that building. And the, the gospel itself is far, far greater because it's not about how... Um, you know, God gives you an enabling power, and then if you do this, right. this, and that, Jesus was enabled yeah. and was yeah. able to go to the cross as a right. savior figure. Right. Right. right? If you, yeah. if you do X, saying. Y, and Z, then you can have all of these different things. Right. right. And like the gospel is a package deal that includes the gift of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us, right. that it's complete forgiveness of sins past, present, and future. Right. It's uh, justification, meaning that God has declared us to be guilty because he recognizes our sinfulness. But the sentence for that has been handed down and carried out on Christ, on the cross, yeah. not can, in the garden. Can I hit that real quick too? And we'll let you hit speak away. real quick. Yeah. That's the biggest point actually where I wanted to get to was, sure. that's the amazing thing mm -hmm. is not a once man and now elevated man slash deity. Yeah. But the point is with him being the I am, the eternal Lord, is he condescended, he stepped into his own creation, because it says in that John 1, Hebrews 1, Colossians 1, that yeah. Jesus created all things. Yeah. He was there, uh, always been there. And that's the amazing part of the gospel is God himself right. took on flesh. Yeah. He became like one of us. Right. He lived a sinless and perfect life and he, God actually, in Jesus Christ, he died upon a cross, 
right? And that's, and that's the biggest thing is in the atonement, if you just look ontologically, theologically, rationally, you were talking about reason earlier. Yeah. It, scholars have determined, Christian scholars have seen that an elevated man, when you think about it, he could not pay for the sins of all of God's elect, all those who would be Christ. Right. If he was just an elevated man, he couldn't atone for their sins because he bears the eternal wrath of the Father upon himself. Yeah. So you and I, if Christ doesn't save us, yeah. we'll bear the weight of our own sin sure. upon ourselves. And what will be the cost? An eternity in hell yes. and separation from God, as scripture yeah. says, right? Yeah. And that doesn't even pay for it. So it's forever, forever, forever. Right because we've offended and sinned against a holy and righteous eternal God. So the punishment is eternal. Yeah. And so, do you get what I'm saying? A temporal, saying, a yeah. temporal person couldn't pay for the eternal wrath and condemnation for fallen humanity. Yeah. It would need to be God himself. And so that's, I'll let you speak at this point, yeah. but that's, that's, that's what we're concerned. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. yeah, that's what we're concerned about is sure. uh, yeah. just, we, we, Jesus was specific on who he is. He yeah. says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he even calls himself the truth. Yeah. And so there's got to be some defining lines of who Jesus right. is and how he's demonstrated himself. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. What do you sure. think of that? Um, well, first off, I'll just say this, just to be brief. I respect that you guys are here yep. because I think it is important. I think that, you know, I think that we need you as much as you need us in the sense that, um, you know, first... First Peter 3.15, right? We always have to be ready. So it's like the fact that you're giving us an opportunity to, to kind of experience, hey, this is what this perspective is that you guys have and, and that, you know, you have an opportunity to, to get that as well. And, and that's, I appreciate it. And I appreciate also, you stopping because yeah. most people are yeah. like, eh. Plenty of people have not apparently listened to the same yeah. messages that you did today. Uh, I, I love it. I, I mean, the fact that you're Go here, out and be a witness. Be a witness, amen. We're literally Je asking you to do exactly that. Jesus is literally alive. So it's like, why would I not? And right, right. He he took a cross and, you know, Bonifer said it, when Christ calls him, any bids him come and die. So that's, that's how I want to be. I want to go die. You know, and so I want to be here, and so I, I appreciate it because I know that you wouldn't be here if you guys didn't love us. And and, I, and thank and I you, love you guys yeah, too, thank you, so, Braxton, yeah. yeah, appreciate you. Uh, in terms of, oh, it's so good. I was thinking John seventeen three and this idea, um, also comparing like all the other religions of the world that every other religion of the world demands that that man dies for God, yeah. and then there's only one where God dies for man. Right. says I'm mm. willing to put this up I'll put it all on the line and you know I'll, I'll let my son experience total separation from me so that you cannot experience total separation forever and that's just beautiful and I and um, so in terms of those other um, trying to there was a lot okay yeah yeah there was a lot yeah the the, the, the nature of Jesus yeah. so right. again in LDS doctrine Jesus, and yeah. by the prophets they right. would say other than what we just said, and we think that that would change the gospel. As he said, yeah. as, as Paul told the Corinthians, yeah. someone's gonna come, people are gonna say this is sure. Jesus. And so what we want for you is, it seems like you have this sincerity about you that I actually, this authenticity that I appreciate, that I, yeah. I don't see all that often, so I'm grateful for that. that. So we don't wanna tear yeah. that apart, we want to see you though place that uh, sure. in the one true and living god yeah and that's that's how serious it is because yeah. we would be at home on recliners right eating cheetos i yeah, don't know whatever exactly. but we come out here and we do, and we do this actually even in byu every week we yeah. we we're all we're called to do this because gets. yeah yeah okay because I go to BYU, idaho so you guys can come up oh right on <laughs> yeah it, we do this because there's fundamental differences yeah. that even Jesus and his word demonstrates could be a separation point. Sure. Yeah. So I get that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think the gospel is vital. I think one thing that I, that will, you know, will, um, will frustrate me sometimes that I hear at church is people will like start talking about the gospel and then they'll, they'll pull out, you know, the missionary pamphlet, the gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ. 
And the manual? The, uh, the missionary pamphlets. Like okay, the okay, lessons. gotcha, yeah. gotcha. And, you know, they start talking about, like, you know, the, the five step, how we respond to the gospel. And I'm like, friends, how you respond to the gospel is not the gospel. The gospel is the good news that Jesus came and lived a perfect life and died and resurrected. And it's not, um, it's not that, you know, you have this opportunity to do repentance and to un unite yourself with him, although that's an important part of the gospel. But the gospel itself is the news about it. The response to it's different. And so I almost never hear the gospel is yeah. vital. People say that, yeah. right? So, yeah. So, so what would you say? First Corinthians 15. You know, what would you say is the role? That's the gospel. Of repentance yeah. in the gospel. Like, do you have to uh -huh. repent? And as uh, Spencer Kimball has said mm -hmm. in Miracle of Miracle Forgiveness, forgiveness yeah. to get to the point where you never do that sin again. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you're not really forgiven. Sure. If I mean. I'm not really in a position where I really have to defend Spencer right. Campbell at all. Yeah, you know? no, so, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm like, if he's if he's right about that, then right. I think what we've been saying, at least what Pastor Wade and I have been saying, sure. and what the Bible says is wrong. Like yeah. you would you would have to reach a point of perfection almost mm. in order to even right, right, that. right. And, and right. So yeah. The real miracle of forgiveness is that as God says in his word, yeah. while we were still sinners, Christ, Christ died, died for us. us. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't, if I was in a position where the yeah. church that I was in was saying, hey, you have to mm. do X, Y, and Z in order to become saved. Sure. And I'm looking at God's word, yeah. which, like you said, that's the standard. Yeah. That's the standard. That's saying, well, no, repentance isn't like that. It's, yeah. it's a change of, um, of allegiance that we right, have. Right, right. And then uh, Meta metanoia, exactly. turning away from yeah, and yeah. calling Christ Lord instead right. of yourself or any other idol. And yeah. and so the way I explain kind of what Ryan is saying, tell me what you think of this, sure. Braxton, is what I've what I've often seen uh, my LDS neighbors do is mm -hmm. uh, they're concerned that we preach like a, a free grace, a yeah. lawless antinomian grace. Which antinomianism is like heresy upon heresy upon yeah, yeah. heresy, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, but what we're concerned about is, you know, in the question, we've already talked about who is Jesus. Now we're moving on to what is the gospel. Yeah. You articulate 1 Corinthians 15 and, right. and what Christ has done. Uh, you know, underlying all that was who is Jesus, that Jesus who died. But now it's like what I'm concerned about is with the LDS churches, if salvation were like a tree, right? I'm, I'm concerned that the LDS organization has taken the total work of Jesus, the total work of Jesus, yeah. and then they've married the work of Jesus with their own works. And then the tree, tree of salvation, so to speak, comes forward from that. However, yeah. I think what overwhelmingly the Bible would articulate is that the root of salvation is not Jesus' total work and ours work worth work with him his work is the total work and only foundation he's the only cornerstone for this salvation and then out pops this tree of salvation and there's fruit all on the branches right right and right, that right. fruit is the good deeds that he has prepared yeah. beforehand for us to walk in right Ephesians 2 2 10 yeah yeah he's yeah. prepared right. for us to walk excuse in excuse me We're losing everything no you're good and so maybe Brad Wilcox won't articulate it the way I just did, yeah, yeah. but sure, the sure. majority of prophets and, and doctrine has yeah. said that that synergistic, you know, which means right. working together, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. That, that work together generates our salvation. So that makes part of this covenant contingent upon you and I. But, I think the whole overwhelming uh, message of Hebrews and, 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 and other, the book of Hebrews and other parts of the Bible with the epistles of Paul is that if this covenant, this new covenant, this covenant of grace yeah. were in any way dependent on you or me, right. we would fail. Yeah. We would fail. Right. And so it needs to be totally on the foundation of Jesus. And so that's what we want for you yeah. is to trust in his work alone not a combination of your works and his works. Yeah. Do you trust in his work alone? 
Oh, I mean, that's that's the goal. And everything I do, you know, I want to magnify the Savior. No, you just uh, talked about doing. Yeah. I want to catch you there. So in everything I do, believe. Like, okay, or, okay. Yeah, Will like, you believe? Yeah, every like every part that encompasses me. Yeah, I want, I want to be that that new creature. So. Yeah. So are you right now? Uh, the, the Bible says in you mentioned Ephesians two. Well, yeah. Ephesians one. Right. Uh, he's he's trying to articulate why it is that uh, that racism is wrong in the church. Right? He's going through that. Yeah. He's wanted to. He, and the first, the whole first chapter, what he's saying is, he's going through all of these different blessings, and he says, you have present tense every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Yeah. And he goes through everything. He talks about. Um, being adopted as something. That's a present tense yeah. reality. Like, you yeah. got this. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. If you can show, yeah. This is faster. I know. Well, I, I just <laughs> figured I've got to re-download the other app that I was going to use. I was going to do some uh, one of the comparison apps, the Blue Letter Bible app. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that one. That's pretty good. It's good, good stuff. Yeah. Oh, I love setting so, yeah. so at the end of the day, if we were to stand before God as, as God is a judge, yeah. and I'll, I'm sorry, yeah. I kind of cut you off, but basically, yeah. is it like, me and Jesus both did the best we could do. Obviously, right. his was better. Right. Or, or will it, or, or yeah. will it be Jesus said, "I paid it all that day." Right. In John chapter right. 19, when he said to Telestai, "It is finished." It yeah, was actually done that right, day. Right. Yeah. Telestai. So, yeah. so the yeah. what it says here is it says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay. who has blessed us with every has blessed us with every spiritual blessing." in the heavenly places in Christ. Mm -hmm. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy mm -hmm. and blameless before him in love. Yeah. He predestined us to adoption as sons mm -hmm. through Christ Jesus to himself according to the kind intention of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of times, that is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heaven and things on the earth. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who was given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. That's a lot in there. Yeah, yeah. The, the yeah. Stuff, though, it's amazing. You've got all of this stuff. Like I said, yeah. salvation is a package deal got all this and more. And what Paul's going to go on to say, he's going to talk about how, you know, we are dead in our trespasses and sins. We bring nothing, contribute nothing to our salvation. And as a result, since there's no contribution that the Jews make, no contribution, uh, contribution that the Gentiles make, so at the end of the day, salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone. And so as a result, nobody can boast. Yeah. yeah, he says that in Romans 3.27. Right. He says, when he's summarizing the gospel, he says, for where then is boasting? Yeah. It is excluded. It is excluded. Right. By what law or principle? Yeah. By the principle of works? No, but by the principle of grace. Right. So when we come to any sort of um, system that says, oh, sure, faith in Christ is good, and you should have it. It's even necessary. Yeah. But you only get so much. And here... There are, there are things that you get just by having faith, yeah. you know, and being baptized. Sure. But you have to also go to the temple and do the temple ordinances yeah. and be sealed in the temple in order to really get the fullness of what God has, right. not just here. Because we, we acknowledge that even as Christians, yeah. you, can, you, you can screw things up here mm -hmm. and not get all that God could give you here in this life. I don't think anyone really in this life. In this yeah. life, exactly. Yeah. Right, right, in right. the next life, though, like Paul says, in the heavenly places, 
all of this stuff has already been given to the Ephesian people when he writes to them. It's an already and not yet principle. Already has been given to us. Yeah. And he's not just talking about himself, all of them and the Ephesians. The Ephesians are just as messed up as, as well, I am. I don't know about the Ephesians. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what he's saying is it's all there, all of grace, all of faith is given. And even the, what you mentioned in Ephesians too, that he prepares. The, even the good works that we do, he's the one who's preparing them. You don't even author them. Right. You get to walk in them. Right. Yeah. But in the Mormon system, what they're saying is yeah. you have to go through all these ordinances sure. in order to even have reconciliation with the Father. You can't go to the celestial kingdom. And, right. and you've heard this. You can't yeah, go to the so celestial kingdom sure. unless you have gone and done the temple ordinances right. and sealed in the temple. Uh, it's the uh, faith, repentance, baptism, uh, gift of the uh, Holy Spirit by laying on of hands and enduring to the end. Sure. That's what it is. And so what we're trying to do here is to just, uh, we're trying to show you what the truth is about the gospel. That is the whole thing by grace through faith that is right. available to anyone regardless of their background. Yeah. regardless of uh, what we've done. And sometimes it seems like God is even like looking out for the people who have sinned the most mm. just to show off. Right? <laughs> show how good he is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so if, like, are you right now in a place where you know that if you were to die right now, yeah. that you would be in the presence of the fullness of God, not just Peace with Spirit, God. Right. Not just... Uh, Christ as if they were lesser but all of who God is and that you would stay there for all eternity due to nothing that you have done. Because that atonement is yeah. efficacious right. and so potent yeah. that it doesn't forgive some of your pre-baptismal sins. Right, right. It forgives sin in total. Right? Yeah. Past, right? present, and future. So, what do you think? Yeah, where are you at with that? Well, we're talking I, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, um, oh, I keep losing. Okay, I'm just gonna put them in my pocket. That's yeah, there you go. Probably for the best. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. So, personally, I, I like to believe it, and I, I say believe because obviously, I guess at the end of the day, there is the as a fallible human, I could not know something. Um, but I would prefer to just declare it because I, I do legitimately think that um, because of what he's done that I would, I would be standing in front of him. Mm. Um, and then no matter, no matter what, I want to see him, you know, and, and I want, um, there's a really good song, I don't know if you've heard it, it's a Christian song, I think this guy's name's Colton something, Dixon. Yeah. So if I had no voice, if I had no tongue, I would dance for you. That's yeah. what I want, you know, and that's what I believe I do. Um, oh, Braxton, know. I, I hope I, I want it for you. Yeah. I want it for you. I, I'm not sure. In fact, I'm certain you won't get it. Out, I respect the, that. No, you know, I, that no, my feelings, no, right? no, yeah. no. Yeah, from the organized or right. Elias organization, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I don't know what God will do with you. Sure, sure. sure. I, the way I started that sentence no, sounded okay. worse than it was. But even if you meant it, like yeah. you know, there's some guys over there that are just nasty. You know? Oh, like, hey, Jesus yeah. loves you, dude. It's We've okay. We've got a couple people today that have thanked us for just not yeah. screaming. And like, yeah. Is that really where the bar is now? That's that's honestly where it is. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, I realize it might be kind of an introspective sure. kind of thing yeah. that you might not have expected. Yeah. But, uh, and I'm, I'm more of a, I, I don't seem like it, but I'm more of like an introverted, yeah. philosophical kind of person. I like yeah. to, I, I go through. You would few, love our buddy Andrew. Really? Oh, yeah. He's super yeah. philosophical yeah. sort of guy. Guys over here. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, I just, I go through an issue and then I'm like, yeah. but what if, what if, what if, yeah. what if, and I go through all like the, you know, deductions of possibilities. Yeah. So I, I, I will definitely, I will definitely keep those in mind. But yeah, for sure. I, uh, what you might want to do is just stay in, in contact with Wade for a little bit. Here. Sure. Oh, actually, I don't have my card on me, but they, on the uh, back, this number, which you have. This one. Yeah. Uh, whoops. I've got someone else gave me one of these earlier. Yeah. There's like eight. That phone number okay. goes straight to my phone. That's you. Yeah. And we're, uh, we're, we're bait. Our P.O. box is in Sandy, but our church is in South Jordan. Okay. But you're in Idaho, you said? Yeah, I used to live in Provo, so I know I know the area, though. So yeah. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. 
I think that if you ever had questions or yeah. just wanted to chat, you sure. text that number, we'll be available, we'll do video chat, we'll do whatever. We, we would not give up on you. We'll be praying for you because it seems like, I don't know, there's something about you that's different than people we've met here. Wouldn't you well, say? Well, like the, the fact that most of, or pretty much all of the references that you've given us today are either uh, Bible references. Christians or Bible references. <laughs> but like yeah. Bonhoeffer. Yeah, and, yeah. I love. Uh, I wrote my senior research paper on him. And yeah. yeah I love him so much. Man. The, uh, normally, like a person isn't saved or yeah. damned by ba on the basis of what organization that they're a part of. Sure. If what you sure said, we believe. Yeah. If we're all, if it's we're possible. all speaking the same language here, and what you've said is true. Yeah. Then I think you're in a dangerous position by remaining there in the church because what they're going to try to do, if you are born again, what this will do is to stifle your growth. yes, yes. If okay. if you're not, then they're going to keep you from being yeah. born again. I mean, not obviously, you know, God has the power to save anyone He wants, uh, but it, they are not going to be helpful to yeah. you, other than maybe superficial things like making you nicer to your neighbors and things like that. But what they what they are teaching, and we we made it a point when we when we made these um, these tracks yeah. to show what what is the official doctrine according to their sources. Sure. Uh, we don't want to misrepresent anybody. You know, yeah. we don't want to put anybody on blast. You have the Children of God one. Uh, I don't think so. Read that one too. Yeah. 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 And it's uh, what we what we're hoping. Yeah. First of all, is that what you said is true that you. Uh, that your your faith is placed in Christ alone and yeah. His efficacious work, and, and we're going to be Wade and I are going to be praying for you as well yeah. as anyone else. Um, and but the that God will lead you by His Spirit away from an to depart from this organization. Uh, okay. Falsehoods about who He is and who yeah. you are, what the gospel is, and towards somebody that's going to be able to cultivate you. I know there's got to be lots of good churches out there in Idaho. Oh yeah, I know. I know several good churches. Yeah, up and there. there's yeah. there's uh, a yeah. there's going to be somebody out there that can kind of coach you and that can be on your level because I know I know what it's like sometimes to have that kind of intellectual side of the brain and be in a place where people are just like telling inspirational stories and like, sure. give me a yeah. Uh, I need me. Yeah. We just want to yeah. yeah. we just and even whoever that would be whether it be the LDS organization or a yeah. Christian, even what we're saying, we want you to test all that we're saying to scripture. Yeah. You see, there is an objective standard, a truth, the truth, that stands transcendent outside of anyone's feelings or uh, spiritual experiences, right? Because today there's this moral relativism that says, we all have truth, I have truth, I have truth. But if your truth contradicts my truth, then whose is actually truth? Yeah. Because then it no longer remains objective and solid. It's permeable and subjective. Yeah. So there's got to be something out there that is fact right. and true. And so mankind yeah. is seeking that. And I would submit to all people that that's in the Word of God, yeah. the, the, the Bible and the Old and New Testaments sure. of that Bible. And yeah. so I think if you were to, uh, Braxton, maybe even you already seem knowledgeable in the scriptures, but if you were just to once again, you're probably already reading it, but if yeah. you just read the whole New Testament sure. yeah. and just started looking at things that Joseph, Brigham, all the presidents, Heber C. Kimball, right. all of them, if you started weighing what they're saying against what you read in the New Testament, I'd be interested to see what you say. And that's, okay. that's where I'll leave it, is I challenge you to read sure. the New Testament with fresh eyes, yeah. See, see what we're talking about, this grace. I mean, goodness, Romans 3, 4, and 5. He says this was even before Abraham worked. He didn't do a single work. He did nothing. A, a worker is owed wages, but, but he, a, a man who doesn't work, gets, gets, is, nothing's owed to him. And so when nothing's owed to you, it's full grace. Grace is unmerited favor, freely given. So just check out the New Testament. You got our number. You got my email there too. We'd love to catch up sometime if you ever have questions. For sure. Okay. Well, sweet. Your nan has been calling you all. Yes, yeah. she has. Yeah. She has. <laughs> I just hope you got Yeah. Thank you so much.